This is a Rampart model kit. I got this from Archon Studios as they're promoting their new Kickstarter and sent me a review copy to try out. Now truth be told, I've never built or used one of these before, so I have no reference point other than my own crafts to relate to. Now what was I going to do with this, you ask? I didn't simply want to assemble it from the instructions on the box. No judgement if that's what you want to do with sets like these. That's a perfectly reasonable way to use them. Now, you see, I wanted to take this box and through the bits inside, make a full set of wargame terrain that's cohesive and fits well together on a large table. There's a problem though. This box, while it does come with a lot of plastic, would not be nearly enough to cover a full table. You may have seen my very large ruined cathedral build, which I did about a year back. While I really love the end result, that terrain has only seen limited use on the table, largely due to its size and configuration. You see, it doesn't really lend itself well to gameplay, as the large roof and walls get in the way of hands and plastic models. It ends up being a large, pretty looking line of sight blocker in reality. So here's the plan. We're going to be sacrificing the Grand Cathedral in exchange for this project. So I got to work vivisecting the main offenders for modularity and playability. The plan is to cut this section in two, so they can be spread apart and used individually. I'm taking the time to make some more usable elevation as well, adding some planks from the debris I made for some larger walkways. For stopping players from putting miniatures in hard to reach places like these side aisles, I pile up a lot of rubble I'm generating from the roof cuts to the entrances of each section where a player might want to move into. This will make the areas of play very clear. While the destruction is underway, let's take some time to look at the model kits and see what's inside. A little break from destruction to do something constructive might be good. So they actually sent me a bunch of boxes, each with a different theme. Their newest set is still in pre-production and involves these modern city ruins with modular floors as well. Neat. We'll use some of these too, but it's mostly going to be the Eternal Cathedral set. Let's start clipping some sprues and oh boy this took a while. Probably an hour of sprue clipping to look forward to. Alright, let me just skip to the bits all clipped. Manufacturers take note, if you find a way to send us pre-clipped parts, that would be amazing. So I think how these are meant to go together is the walls connect together with these round pegs or you can use magnets here if you don't want to glue anything in place. We're just going to be gluing everything together so I'm not too bothered by it. Wow, there's an absolute ton of detail on these pieces. Very well done for the Rampart system. The link to the Kickstarter of where you can pick these up will be in the description. Alright, enough of that clean plastic for now, let's get back to destroying more terrain. This part was probably the hardest to break apart. I built this thing like a tank. The outside is air dry clay, so I took some time scoring it with my Olfa knife to get a predictable break. The bottom is a quarter inch MDF, so that took quite a few scores on either side. And once the walls were separated with some tin snips, I cracked this section in half like some sort of gothic crustacean. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Well, technically it's all coming apart, but you know what I mean. I strategically re-glue some parts into place, as if they had fallen apart with time rather than forcefully separated. Then I remembered I also made this set of smaller structures for the side cloister. These parts were a lot more modular and I've used them more. But one problem I've had with them is it's almost impossible to place 32mm squads of troops inside and have them actually navigate without a lot of finger gymnastics. Then it dawned on me. What if we just separate them from the base? Oh, wow, they actually make awesome baseless walls. They don't tip over easily as long as they have some sort of 90 degree bend. The few walls that didn't have a bend were glued together to form corners easily. This gave me the idea on how to incorporate the new kit pieces as well. What if we add additional floors onto this set of walls? 
And then we use the Eternal Cathedral plastic to make up the second floors, as well as sections around it. Here's where some of those City Ruins floors came in hand as well. This adds some great elevation. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. The facade section of the cathedral always felt a bit bland on the inside. So why not take some of these long pillars to add some fantastic details. I even digitally designed some simpler octagonal pillars to go alongside these as I wanted to carry this design element throughout the cathedral sections. We can assemble a larger wall section and epoxy it to the side here as well. Had to cut out a channel for it in the clay, but it should hold well enough, especially once we extend the base out a bit too. Took a bit of a break here to test out how the cathedral still goes together. It still retains its initial shape very well, which is nice. All right, now let's assemble the rest of this model kit. I did end up making two square sections out of this kit as a sort of standalone structures that could be placed anywhere and add some larger elevation. Still felt like it was missing something. So I asked my patrons what they thought of the project so far and they just sent me this meme on Discord. Welcome. To ladders. Scaffoldings and wooden walkways. That's brilliant. I knew there was a reason I pay you guys the big bucks. Wait, I, I think that's wrong. I think they're the ones that are paying me. Should I start paying them? No, that's silly. By the way, links to my Patreon in the description. Let me prototype how these would look real quick. Just using some balsa wood to cut some planks. Nothing fancy. Gonna need more of these. Okay, quick side adventure into Blender and Adobe Medium, and we have some 3D design modular scaffoldings and ladders. Efficiency. I made these so they print flat on my FDM printer, which I find a lot easier to prototype parts with than my resin printer, as I don't have to do any post-processing steps. Plus, you can avoid layer lines by printing mostly flat pieces like this horizontally on the build plate, and just slicing them in half to get the top side and the bottom side both facing up. Another great thing about these prints is they're made from PLA filament, which means I can use my polystyrene plastic cement, which is used on most plastic model kits. This glue is probably the strongest bond you can ever make. After the solvent evaporates, the parts are effectively one piece at the molecular level. I'm not a chemist, but I'm pretty sure that checks out. Let me know in the comments if you're a chemist. Look at these little things. These are so neat. I'm gonna leave a bunch of these freestanding as they're universally usable for a lot of systems. I made some L braces too, so that I could attach them to the sides of walls. Oh, and a bunch of ladders as well as this ramp structure. I'll leave a link in the description for where to pick these files up if you want them. I figured I could also add a way to scale the large facade section of the cathedral with some of these ladders and scaffoldings, so they got glued in place here. To thank my awesome patrons for giving me such a great idea, I decided to give the nameplates on the cathedral a refresh. I haven't done a shout out like this in a while, so I figured I would knock out all my patrons in one go for this video. Okay, all 31 of you get a plaque on the cathedral walls now. Thank you. I also added some more details and finishing touches, such as timbers on the undersides of the roof and those octagonal pillars to a lot of the arches. To finish off those new raised sections, I bulked out the bottoms with XPS foam and carved it with a hot wire cutter. And coming in with some tacky glue and a lot of the debris I'm saving from demolishing the cathedral, I sprinkled it as detritus and rubble on the slopes around some of the corners, while also sculpting the XPS more to look like worn down stone. Now for the unifying step, plaster. I'm tinting the mix with some black gesso to give it a bit more strength 
and also so that any chips and dings don't stand out as stark white. I work this in with my hand and smooth out with water to get the shape I want. I tried to brush it off any of the plastic pieces as I didn't want the detail obscured too much. Next up was the step that probably took the longest in this project, the repainting. Another gripe I had with the original cathedral was the paint scheme. It was too dark, bland, and boring. Other than the roof, the roof was on point. The rest of the cathedral was this drab medium gray and basically just black on the inside. After putting on about 100k more kilometers on my airbrush and getting everything to a pretty bright base coat, I started layering on some colors. First add some texture back in with a heavy dry brush of ivory, and then a warmer tan and reddish brown, as well as a stark teal for some of the window frames. All the wood got some red undertones with progressive brown and tan highlights, and to get that awesome blue roof back, I came in with a large flat brush and picked out the shingles again. Then after some washes, more dry brushing, more picking out details, and even adding some small hints of vines with some foam and sawdust flock. It was time to see if my work had paid off. Did I manage to make a full set of cohesive, modular wargame terrain for a full large table? As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.